Hi, I'm Bill Allen from Load Controls. I would like to go through the programming of the set points and delays in the PMP25. At this point, the full scale capacity would be programmed into the display to read horsepower, percent load, or KW. Now the trip points can be set in the same units of measurement. One method for finding the load trip point is to start the pump and use the discharge valve to cut flow and actually see what happens when the pump is deadheaded. Deadheading will cause cavitation leaving some fluid in the pump. This is better than closing the supply side and should be done momentarily so not to heat up the pump. When the discharge valve is closed, horsepower will drop down to some number and the load trip point should be set just above that number. Some believe that starting the pump with the discharge valve closed puts less stress on the system as opposed to closing the discharge valve while pumping. Either way can determine where to place the load trip point. Setting the load trip point for a deadhead condition will also work for loss of fluid on the suction side. The high trip can be set 10% or more above the normal running condition of the pump. The high trip is there for problem conditions like solids in the pump where power will change very rapidly. Another method to find the load trip points is to use the flow curve for the pump. Where deadheading the pump is not practical, the flow curve for the pump can be used to find high and low flow points. Flow curves will show horsepower versus flow, and the PMP25 measures horsepower. Let's zoom in the camera and get started. The menu selections move through a continuous cycle controlled by the blue cycle arrow. If the display resets back to normal operation before data is entered, press and release the cycle arrow to get back to where you need to be. Also, display changes can only be made by holding the enter button until the blinking stops which takes five seconds. Once the high and low trip points are known, they can be entered into the PMP25. Let's use five horsepower for the high trip and one and a half horsepower for the low trip. The first press and release of the blue cycle arrow will select the high trip point. Move to the up or down arrow and hold for fast incrementing of the digits toward 5.00. When close, tap the up or down arrow to step the digits and enter. Tap the cycle arrow and the high delay setting is shown. We will leave set for two seconds. Tap the cycle arrow and the low trip point is shown. Move to the up or down arrow and hold for fast incrementing toward 1.50. When close, tap the up or down arrow to step the digits and then enter. Tap the cycle arrow to show the low delay. We will leave set at 5 seconds. Again, tap the cycle arrow to show the start timer. We will leave set for 2 seconds. Let the display reset back to normal operation. Now the pump will start and run in the window between the high and low trip points. If the pump runs off the curve in either direction, a trip will occur and the output relay will take whatever action is needed. The delay timers and start timer are application specific. We left the default settings in our example, but certain applications will need the delay settings changed to match the application. For instance, a magnetically coupled pump pumping a volatile material will have a short load trip delay so the pump doesn't heat up if dry running. A rail car or truck unloading application will have a much longer trip delay to ensure the tank is empty and the pump is just not in momentary cavitation. The start delay time of 2 seconds is good for most centrifugal pump applications, but with cell priming pumps, the start timer would need to be set much longer than the prime time of the pump, which could be minutes. Well, I guess that's it for programming the PMP25 set points. If you need help, give us a call here at Low Controls.